What do you make of the fact that two British soldiers were captured and have now received a death sentence in the Donbass? One of those soldiers, I think, has written his family saying that he thinks his demise is imminent. Um, and then and the backdrop to that dramatic uh, backdrop, if you're an American, is that two Americans are now also uh, in prisoners of, of, I don't, they're prisoners of war as far as we're concerned. Uh, they are being treated as foreign mercenaries by the by uh, the fighters in the Donbass, separatist fighters who are backed by the Kremlin. And I think that it, it is the tragic, um, absolutely tragic um, outcome of what is a risky venture, right? I think that's part of the problem. We we say uh, regular armed forces, they say mercenaries, we say foreign volunteers. You know, they've even thrown out the word terrorism. And we did flag at the Sufan Center that these terms are going to be hotly contested. Um, you know, in um, in all these cases, I do have to say that you know, even though I'm <laughs> even though I'm not a lawyer, still we do know that IHL allows for the lawful detention of those participating in hostilities, but they're also supposed to be accorded the full protections due under IHL, and it's difficult to see whether that is the case here. Um, I do think that governments, and you know, we've written on this, and um, that governments who were in fact encouraging people to go need to make sure that their citizens are also aware that there are these risks, that it is not clear that everyone who is going will be accorded the kind of status they think they'll get. They were fighting, I believe, in uniform. Certainly the, the British fighters um, were, were living in Ukraine. Uh, I, I, and I think, yeah, I, I think that is, that's exactly the challenge. I mean, they, all reports suggest that they were a resident in Ukraine before, that they were part of the uniformed armed services. And, and should be afforded people. under the Geneva Convention, they, all the rights of all, a prisoner all, of war, you can't sentence yeah. them to death. All detainees should be afforded the full protections of IHL. And certainly those um, that are reportedly there before the conflict and in the regular armed forces. And you know, there should be evidence that is able to prove that certainly in these cases should absolutely be accorded um, all the protections under IHL. What do you make of the Kremlin's argument that th this is the Donbass? These are separatists within the Donbass that are holding them and will carry out the death sentence and the Kremlin trying to distance itself um, from how these prisoners are going to be treated ultimately? Uh, it's hard to have it both ways. You're either influential in the region and helping people and therefore you have leverage or, or you're distant. I think that there should be, they know that they can bring pressure to bear to enforce IHL. If, if they really are concerned that these are combatants that they are detaining, they should give ICRC full access and observe all the IHL protections that are due and they should, you know, if, if Moscow is as influential in the region as they claim to be and it's their sphere of influence, then they should be influencing them and publicly so to ensure those protections are met, which we are not seeing.